We begin tonight with an NBC3 exclusive. Two brothers infamous for the crime they were accused of committing, the kidnapping of Heidi Allen. Richard Thibodeau talks tonight about his regrets over letting the police know he bought cigarettes at the D&W convenience store that day. Gary Thibodeau now is in failing health in a prison hospital in Coxsackie as his chances for a new trial dwindle. He still maintains he was not with his brother on Easter Sunday morning, 1994. The kidnapping of Heidi Allen instantly grabbed the attention of the Oswego County community. The posters went up. There was a thirst to find whoever was responsible for her disappearance without a trace. Only one brother was convicted in separate trials. Four years ago, new information surfaced that led to a hearing and revived hope for Gary Thibodeau to get a new trial. Witnesses pointed to three other men who might be responsible. The lower court rejected Thibodeau's arguments then. Two levels of appeals led to a narrowing decision, but still not enough to favor Gary Thibodeau's release. Our stories are generating a new wave of discussion about the well-known kidnapping case, with people questioning whether the right man is serving time. As we continue tonight, we have the story of two brothers and perhaps the most memorable moment of this case when the jury returned the verdict in the Gary Thibodeau trial. How do you find the defendant as to count number one, kidnapping in first degree? Guilty. No! June of 1995. 14 months after Heidi Allen disappeared, a stunned Gary Thibodeau hears the guilty verdict, even though it was brother Richard who could be placed at the D&W. From our news archive. His brother Gary Thibodeau was later arrested on the same charge. But the key question in the Allen case remains unanswered. It is a simple question. Why? The question of why lingered even after the prosecution rested and the jury deliberated. And it seemed like the jury was not even sure you did it. The jury came back a couple of times and said there was no evidence against me. Twice. And then they come out again. The jury says, the, the little lady in the front, she says, uh, she looks at me and she's crying. And she's mouthing and she's saying, like, they made me do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's in the wheelchair. Yeah, he's in the wheelchair. Yeah, I, first time I see him up in a long time. Every time I go see him, he's in bed. So. Right, yeah, and they basically, I think, got him out of bed. To... Yeah, yeah, he's not looking too well, is he? In photos from our interview with Gary, Richard Thibodeau can see his brother's decline. He hasn't made a prison visit in a couple of months. He's sitting now in the front yard of what was his wife's grandmother's home. This is where he had dinner on Easter Sunday, 1994 just a couple of miles from his former home in New Haven, where his day began. This is where you were the, the morning she was kidnapped. You drove from here that direction to go to the DNW. Right, I went from here, I went to the DNW. Oh, here it is right here, right? Yep, yep, I pulled in that way. Right I turned way. right here. Right turn. yep. Richard Thibodeau gives us this exclusive ride down Route 104. It's the same route he yep. took that Easter Sunday morning to buy two packs of cigarettes at the D&W convenience store. Well, up a little further, and I'll show you where I parked. Right. Go a little more. Oh, whoa, right? And it was back, like, this guy was parked right in front of me, right here. That guy was a witness who placed Richard Thibodeau at the scene, but could not place Brother Gary there with him. What's it like to be back here? Weird at all, or no big deal? <laughs> it's no big deal. I don't like it here, but because we got accused of kidnapping from this place, so I, I don't really come here that much. Richard then drove his van home, picked up his family, made his way to his wife's grandmother's house. He recalls they passed the police tape at the convenience store, not knowing what happened. After a while, it come on TV that Huddy Allen was kidnapped on, from the store. I said to her, her grandma, I said, well, I was there. I said, everything was fine when I left. She says, maybe you ought to call and let them know that you were at least there. So I did, like a dummy. I shouldn't have done that. You and Dick weren't even together that morning. No, no. Dick and I were hardly ever together. Never. We go play pool. We work on cars once in a while. We work construction, six houses. <laughs> That's about it. While Gary has served more than 23 years in prison, Richard calls his home, 
his yard, his own prison. He was not allowed in court to watch his brother's trial. Were you surprised though when you got the news that he'd been convicted? Yeah, I was shocked. I started crying. The Thibodeaux are well known because of this case, although Richard feels the harsh attention has eased as people have come to believe more in Gary's innocence. What, what would you like to see done for your brother at this point? I would like to see him get out and get to a good hospital where he could get some medical attention, some good medical attention. You think you're going to die? Oh, I know we're all going to die. Some are sooner than others. Mm -hmm. I hope mine is sooner than others. This is ridiculous. He's in, in terrible health. You can tell he's yeah. exhausted uh, every day. It's a chore. Tomorrow we hear from the Oswego County District Attorney Gregory Oaks. Now, Oaks was a college student going back to 1994, but he's carried on this case through these recent appeals as Oswego County's lead prosecutor. I sit down with him to talk with him about his view that Gary Thibodeau is responsible for Heidi Allen's disappearance. You'll hear that tomorrow on NBC3 News. You can watch all these stories, read an in-depth article on our visit to Gary Thibodeau in prison by going to our website, cnycentral.com.